What's going on YouTube? So here today I have the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus and the LG V20. Now I wanted to do a buyer's guide because these phones are pretty well neck and neck as large sized phablets when you go to purchase your phone. So if you are looking for a good phablet this is what you will find at most any phone store. So we'll start off with our software and just go through the hardware features one by one. So the LG V20 was the first phone to have Android 7.0 Nougat out of the box. And the Galaxy S8 Plus also has 7.0 Nougat on it. However, the LG V20 came out towards the end of last year and it still has not been upgraded to 7.1.1 or 7.1.2 and neither has the Galaxy S8 Plus. So the S8 Plus is 173 grams, whereas the LG V20 is coming in at 174 grams. The SA Plus is glass front and back with a metal with metal side rails on it. And the LGB20 has Gorilla Glass 4 front and a unibody metal design. However, the battery is removable. So that is a bonus for the LGB20. Also with the V20, we get the quad DAC, the dual cameras, and I mean just there's way more features on the LG V20 for a media powerhouse. However, the Galaxy S8 Plus is more for your day-to-day -day average usage. And, I mean, it's going to gonna be excellent for watching media content. We are looking at a 6.2-inch display versus a 5.7-inch display. So that's quite a difference. However, the LG V20 does have this secondary display, which is very useful. It's much like the taskbar in Windows, so that's something to note as well. Another one up for the V20 against the S8 Plus. However, screen to body ratio, you cannot beat on the S8 Plus compared to the LG V20. The S8 Plus is looking at an 83.32% screen to body ratio whereas the LG V20 has a 72.4 percent screen to body ratio. So the SA Plus is Gorilla Glass 5 front and back this one's Gorilla Glass 4 so it may be a little bit more scratch resistant but it'll break easier than the SA Plus. And the Samsung has a Super AMOLED HDR display. So this is an 18 and a half by 9 aspect ratio, the first of its kind with 18 and a half. However, we do have the G6 with 18 by 9, so it's not the only one with this tall aspect ratio, but it's the first one to have the 18 and a half by 9 aspect ratio. And uh, it's rocking 529 pixels per inch with an IP68 dust and water resistant score. The LG V20 does not have any IP rating. It It's rocking a IPS LCD display. It does not have HDR capabilities. It's not HDR enabled. And also with this, you get a 5.7 inch 16 by nine. So more of a standard aspect ratio of screen compared to the aspect ratio of 18 by 9, 18 and a half by 9 on the S8 Plus. So, however, the V20 does have military standard 810G drop and shock resistance, which is something that Samsung cannot save for itself. They both have fingerprint scanners, however, the location on the V20 is much better than that of the S8 Plus. The S8 Plus 
is a stretch for most people, not so much for me where I have large hands, but for most people it's a stretch and it's really more directed towards right-handed users, whereas the V20 is more of a u universal fitment. So, and also with the LG V20, we get dual LED flash. It's not dual tone, but there is two LEDs, so it's very bright. And on the S8 Plus, it's only a single LED flash. So for these cameras, we'll start with the SA Plus. We got a 12 megapixel camera with an f1.7 aperture, dual pixel autofocus. So the autofocus is extremely fast and it tends to take very clear pictures and it's decent in low light. I wouldn't say it's the best, but it is decent in low light. Now coming over to the LG V20, we have a dual camera setup. So we have a wide angle, eight megapixel sensor and a standard angle, 16 megapixel sensor. So we are looking at phase detection autofocus and laser autofocus on the LG V20. So the autofocus isn't as lightning fast as it is on the S8 Plus. Now, moving on, we will take a look at some of the internal specs. So the SA Plus obviously has the newer silicon. It's rocking a Snapdragon 835 octa-core with the newest 10 nanometer process. So this is an extremely powerful processor, but it will sip the battery life. And battery life, I'm, I will be getting to that in a second. Now this is an Adreno 540 GPU, so it'll handle the most intensive 3D games that you throw at it. It's got four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. Now moving over to our LG V20, we are looking at a Snapdragon 820, which is only a quad core running on the older 14 nanometer process. So don't get me wrong, this is still an extremely powerful chip even by today's standards, but it is definitely beat out by the power of the S8 Plus. Also, we are looking at an Adreno 530 GPU, so last year's um, last year's graphics processing unit, and we got four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage as well. Both of these phones also have micro SD expansion. So, coming back to battery now, on the S8 Plus we have a 3,500 milliamp hour battery, which is non-removable. And as I said before, we have a removable battery on the V20. It is 3,200 milliamps. Now, 3,500 and 3,200, they're pretty close. So we get about 300 more on the S8 Plus. However, when using the S8 Plus, I get almost double the battery life that I do of the V20. It may be due to the fact that the V20 is running more intensive hardware than what the SA Plus is. The SA Plus has power sipping hardware. So moving on, we are looking at USB-C on both of these. However, we have the newer USB-C 3.1 standard on the SA Plus. So you get faster download and upload speeds when USB is connected as well as faster charging. And the, the uh, V20 has USB-C 2.0, which is an older standard, and no wireless charging. I forgot to mention, the SA Plus does have wireless charging equipped. It comes with Bluetooth 5, which is the newest standard in Bluetooth, whereas the V20 has Bluetooth 4.2. So there's been a lot of confusion about what Bluetooth 5 actually does on the internet. And as of right now, we cannot use Bluetooth 5 because there's no support for it in Android Nougat. So the dual audio setup that you get over Bluetooth on the SA Plus is not Bluetooth 5. It is a program added onto the older Bluetooth 4.2. This phone does have Bluetooth 5, it is future proofing, but we have yet to be able to use it. So moving on to headphones 
And yes, both of these phones do have a headphone jack. So, however, the headphone jack on the LG V20 is far superior to that of the S8 Plus. We're looking at a quad jack tuned by B&O Play, Bang & Olufsen, for the LG V20, whereas we're, we're rocking a single DAC, better than last year's, mind you, but it's still a single DAC on the S8 Plus. So it's nice that both of these companies have stuck with the headphone jack. It is one of the most used features that either of these phones has. Also, I forgot to mention, the S8 Plus has iris scanning. And they, they have managed to fool this, but you have to have pretty advanced technology to be able to do it. So, that pretty much sums it up for these two phones. Now, I wanted to do a quick little summary here at the end. The Galaxy S8 Plus is for the person who does a lot, watches a lot of media content on their phone and they play a lot of games, they want that big screen and they just want to have a good time using their phone. The LG V20 leans more towards the people that create the media, the people that want to make the best videos and they want to have the best audio quality and they want to they want to take the back the best pictures it's it's not necessarily the best display on the v20 compared to the s8 because it's not meant for content viewing it's meant for creating content so this wraps it up if you're a media creator i say go with the lgv20 if you're a media consumer, go for the Galaxy S8 Plus. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and we will catch you on the next one.